Hey guys, let's get more news about Steelers, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. First call, Bill Guerin's take on his 09 teammates still with Penguins, ex-Steelers up for College Football Hall of Fame. Tuesday's first call has a list of former Pittsburgh Steelers up for the College Football Hall of Fame. More big money is being handed out to NFL wide receivers. Bill Guerin has an interesting take on his former Penguins teammates who remain in Pittsburgh from the 2009 Stanley Cup Club. And we look at the pitching matchups in the Pirates Dodgers series. It's been almost 15 years since Bill Guerin won a Stanley Cup with the Penguins. And it's been six years since that franchise won a playoff round. But Guerin, now the general manager of the Minnesota Wild, insists his old Penguins teammates aren't washed up. Appearing Monday on 105.9 The X, Mark Madden asked Guerin if he felt that those 2009 holdovers had at least one more deep postseason run left in them. I think they've got a lot more than that in them, Guerin replied. They're just some of the all time greats and they still have got a lot left in the tank. I watch them all the time, and it's amazing to see what they can still do. They used to laugh at me when I was that old, and still playing at 38 on the cup team, but they're doing okay. I'd love to think that Garen is right. I just don't think he is. Sidney Crosby is clearly still in good form. But Chris Letang is on the back nine of his career, and Evgeny Malkin bellied up at the 19th hole a long time ago. If I'm Penn's GM Kyle Dubas and I see those quotes, I'm calling Garen ASAP and asking him how much he's willing to give for Malkin or Letang, how much of the contracts he'd be willing to take on, and if he wants to get on the horn to sweet talk either or both of those guys into waiving their no trade clauses. Hey, Garen has revealed a soft spot for his 2009 teammates in the past. In 2022, Garen traded for goaltender Marc Andre Fleury. Then, at the age of 38, signed him to a two year contract before the 2022 23 season. Now, with Fleury turning 40 in November, Garen locked up the flower for one more year in 2024 25. I won't let him retire. I just keep giving him contracts, Garen said. But he's still got the fire and the desire to play and wants to do it at a high level. Fleury is set to make $2.5 million next year before retiring. Minnesota Vikings wide receiver Justin Jefferson may have impacted the Steelers' hopes of trading for a top-flight wide receiver. According to ESPN.com, Jefferson signed a $140 million extension with the Vikings on Monday. It's a four-year deal, and $110 million is guaranteed. A former NFL Offensive Player of the Year and two-time All-Pro, Jefferson may be at the top of the market for receivers, and he was likely never a target for the Steelers on the trade front. But anyone else the Steelers may be considering acquiring is only going to be worth the compensation if the player is coming with a new agreement in place. Now, after Jefferson's deal, that ticket is going to be extremely steep. That goes for Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, C.D. Lamb, D.K. Metcalf and even Cortland Sutton. Whatever widely rumored trade target the Steelers may have been linked to, that guy is worth more today than he was when he woke up Monday morning. That goes for their current teams, the Steelers, or anyone else. Personally, I don't think that should dissuade the Steelers from investigating better options than what they have, because they don't have much after George Pickens in the first place. But my bet is Omar Khan and Mike Tomlin have a different opinion. Patrick Queen stirs up Steelers vs. Ravens rivalry with bold Baltimore critique after signing. Patrick Queen switch from the Baltimore Ravens to their fierce rivals, the Pittsburgh Steelers, has certainly stirred the pot. After a four-year stint with the Ravens, Queen didn't hold back in his criticism of his former team and even the city itself. Drafted 28th overall by Baltimore in 2020, Queen had a solid run but chose to jump ship to what he sees as a Super Bowl-worthy team, signing a juicy three-year, $41 million deal with the Steelers. Despite offers from a reported 15 other teams, some dangling contracts worth up to $17 million annually, Queen was lured by the vibe in Pittsburgh. 
during a recent press huddle, he praised everything with Pittsburgh from the cooler atmosphere to the superior food spots. It's a better atmosphere here for me. Everybody is cool, the people are cool, the players are cool, the food spots are better, Queens shared, expressing his preference for general cuisine over seafood. I'm more of a true food guy rather than a seafood guy. It's just a better atmosphere for me here. This bold move and candid comments have ignited a fiery debate online, drawing sharp reactions from both Ravens fans and Steelers supporters, with social media buzzing and comments pouring in by the hundreds. An NFL fan expressed disappointment, subtly stating, he's trying to convince himself that he's happy. That's sad, nobody in the history of the United States says Pittsburgh is where you go to get great food if you're a food person. However, dedicated Steelers fans didn't let this pass, firmly defending their city's gastronomic excellence. Steelers projected to likely re-sign former released starter. Under general manager Omar Khan, the Pittsburgh Steelers have tended to sign more free agents than they did in previous years, but move on from those signings when they don't work. This offseason, the Steelers prematurely ended contracts with four players they added in free agency, including three-time All-Pro Patrick Peterson. But Steelers Depot's Jonathan Heitreter argued on June 2 that there's a good chance the Steelers re-sign one of their former players prior to training camp. Heitreter considered Peterson the most likely ex-Steelers player to return. With no clear-cut starting option in the nickel for Pittsburgh at this point in the offseason, there's a chance that Peterson could be brought back on a team-friendly deal to contribute there as well as continue to provide the leadership presence to the team's secondary after being a mentor to the likes of C.B. Joey Porter Jr. last season, wrote Heitreter. The Steelers' depot writer isn't the only one who considers a Steelers-Peterson reunion a decent possibility. Bleacher Report's Christopher Knox named the Steelers one of the top two best fits for Peterson on June 1. A return to Pittsburgh would make sense, assuming the Steelers are willing to keep him at cornerback, wrote Knox. Pittsburgh traded for Dante Jackson this offseason, but it doesn't exactly have a glut of depth behind Jackson and Joey Porter Jr. In his only season with the Steelers last year, Peterson posted 42 combined tackles with 11 pass defenses and two interceptions. Other than Peterson, Hytrider named fellow cornerbacks Shandon Sullivan and Cameron Sutton as potential return candidates. Hytrider also mentioned edge rusher Marcus Golden and center Mason Cole. Since the end of the offseason quarterback drama, most of the focus around the Steelers has been on the potential for the team to add a receiver. But the secondary is another area where Pittsburgh could use additional depth. As Knox noted, the Steelers acquired Dante Jackson in a trade from the Carolina Panthers. But the only other notable addition the team made at cornerback was Texas Ryan Watts in the sixth round of the 2024 NFL Draft. Depth cornerbacks Corey Trice Jr. and Darius Rush could play a bigger role this fall. There was also some initial excitement around undrafted free agent cornerback Beanie Bishop Jr. Rush and Bishop are candidates for playing time in the slot. But it would still make sense for the Steelers to add Peterson again for additional insurance in the slot and outside. Peterson isn't against a return either. We've still got time left on the table, said Peterson while appearing on The Jim Rome Show on May 21. Hopefully I can get something done with the Steelers. That's the team that I definitely want to play for because I have so much respect for Coach Tomlin. Peterson isn't the player he once was. While he's made eight Pro Bowls, he hasn't earned a Pro Bowl nomination since 2018. But in the right situation, Peterson could potentially still add valuable veteran experience. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Patrick Peterson? Leave your opinion in the comments.